Thank you all for coming. Everybody's ready? Okay. To my immediate left uh, uh, is Jeff and Brandy France, uh, F-R-A-N-Z. They are the parents of Riley and Bella, who were victims in the Oxford High School shooting. I'm going to uh, give you a statement that we've prepared. Um, I'll take questions after the parents will not be uh, speaking. Um, if you have any questions for me, I'll be gr glad to answer uh, a limited, reasonable number of questions, and uh, then we'll go from there. More than 20 years ago, I appeared before cameras that uh, looked remarkably like those in this room in Denver, Colorado, after two students, Klebold and Harris, who looked remarkably like Ethan Crumbly, murdered my client's son, Isaiah Scholes, and a dozen other students and teachers and wounded my client's son, Mark Taylor, and 21 others, all students and victims who looked remarkably like my clients today. In a high school, Columbine High School, that looked and looks remarkably like Oxford High School in Oxford, Michigan. Columbine at that time, 1999, 13 dead, 23 wounded. Oxford High School, four dead, seven wounded. And between 1999 and Columbine and 2021 at Ox Oxford High School, 304 fatal shootings in America's schools 278,000 children traumatized as a result of the shootings in their schools. 298 schools like Columbine and Oxford High School involved. 20 years, 20 years, and nothing's changed. So we could talk today about the nearly 300 school shootings and the hundreds of children that have been murdered in classrooms since Columbine. I could talk today about the hundreds of thousands of children who are traumatized for life, like Bella, like Riley, sitting in classrooms afraid that at any moment someone might start shooting. We could talk about children who have to be trained to respond to mass shootings, who are, need to be trained to know enough to barricade doors and to text one last message to their parents if they don't survive. We could talk about the lockdown locks that they installed at Oxford High School, and they're very proud of. We could talk about the need for medical de metal detectors in our schools. We could talk about the possibility of clear backpacks. We could talk about turning our schools into armed fortresses. We could talk about the need for legislation. We've been talking for over 20 years, for God's sake. Some of us are tired of talking. I know I am. So today, at least, I am going to do something on behalf of the parents and the children that I represent and that were victimized at Oxford High School. We're going to hold people responsible for betraying the trust we put in them to protect our children. We're going to hold every one of them 
responsible. The Oakland County prosecutor has done her job, and she's extending the law to the parents who encouraged disturbed children and then put weapons of mass murder into their deranged son's hands. But that's not enough. I now am going to prosecute the rest of this case for everyone else. The prosecutor has her job and I have mine. It's not enough to make murderers like these people and their son responsible or complicit parents. It's not enough to make these complicit parents who put the guns into the hands of their son responsible. There's a responsibility that our society shares in protecting our children. There is a responsibility among teachers, counselors, and school administrators who could easily, easily have prevented and stopped the slaughter. We all have to look at what individual responsibility we may have. And now we have to do something about it. At Oxford High School, they'll search your backpack if they think you're vaping. But they refused to suspend or search a student who wrote what we now know was reams of homicidal notes and drawings, scenes of classroom slaughter and mayhem. We know they refused to call authorities, that there was a police liaison available who could have been called in when they were well aware of Crumley's violent and murderous intent. When the disturbed parents refused to get help for their disturbed child, they did nothing. They failed to consider the safety of other students, and they allowed a deranged homicidal student to return to class with a gun in his backpack, with over 30 rounds of ammo in his backpack, when they knew he was a homicidal threat. He had told them as much. He had written as much. He had drawn pictures of his plan and he was allowed to carry it out. Now, I understand we can't change the perverted values of the Second Amendment society overnight, values that prioritize gun ownership over the lives of our children. But we can make the cost of denying our own responsibility to stop this slaughter of our children so costly that maybe, just maybe, one less child will survive and not be murdered. So maybe, just maybe, children can be children again and live and learn in safe environments. We hope by this lawsuit to make the financial cost of allowing children to be slaughtered very high so as to compel people to do something, if moral responsibility, and which it has for over 20 years, has proved insufficient to make them act. When the right to own a gun trumps the right to protect our children and to make them safe, you know in America we have misplaced our priorities. We have to love and protect our children first and foremost. And so by this lawsuit, it's time that we stop talking and start acting. These parents have chosen to act. And today, we have done just that. Today, we have filed a federal lawsuit, which I provided to you, <coughs> alleging that the counselors the teachers, the school administrators who failed the students at Oxford High School at virtually every turn, therefore violated the civil rights of the Oxford High School students who were injured and killed
during the slaughter. We have also prepared and are going to now amend the federal lawsuit that was filed be before Judge Goldsmith to include state causes of action, which include both gross negligence and endangerment of children under the child protection laws of the state of Michigan. Now finally, and I'm not ignorant of this, having practiced in this state and others for many years, that the laws, the, I guess the, the sordid truth, the, 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 the secret that, that is openly known among lawyers in this state is that our political officials talk about and give lip service to the safety of our children and then behind your back they make the laws such that parents such as the Franzes can't do anything about it. They tie their hands and they make it virtually impossible for them to bring lawsuits to protect their children, to make it costly for wrongdoers to allow this to happen. That's the, uh, the unfortunate uh, secret that uh, many people in the state of Michigan aren't aware of, that their lawmakers make behind their back talk one line and then behind their back in conjunction with insurance companies make it impossible for victims to sue. I understand we have a hard road to hoe. I understand that this is not going to be easy. However, now is the time to do something about it. And if somebody out there wonders why, what do you stand to gain, because the law doesn't allow us to prosecute and put any more people in jail, that's the prosecutor's job. The law only allows us one outlet, and that is to make it so costly that it hurts in the pocketbook so that they might not do it again. Now that might not be enough. That might be insufficient. That might be just absolutely, uh, <clears throat> if you will, spitting in the wind. But it's something. It's something. Somebody's got to start paying attention. And if not now, when? I'll be glad to answer any questions here. Who's the they you're referring to? School officials? Uh, School at we're all involved. I don't think my statement made it any less clear that we all share blame for allowing these events to constantly occur. Um, I might add that the news media shares blame in this because you talk about everything except the most obvious, which is the, the mechanism by which the slaughter occurred, which is the guns, because you've been cowed into submission and you believe that in America we're not, uh, no longer allowed to talk about the one thing every other society in the world would talk about is how in the world does a 15-year-old get armed to murder people in schools. You fail to talk about that, but we as a society fail to talk about it. We talk about everything else except the 10 million pound gorilla in the room, which is the guns. We talk about metal detectors. We talk about uh, clear backpacks. We talk about something that could have prevented this obviously, bringing the police liaison officer into the uh, uh, room with uh, Crumley and not allowing him to go back to the classroom, but immediately removing him from the classroom. We talk about all these things, but we don't do anything. We sit there and let the prosecutor prosecute these deranged people who allowed their son to have guns and then took $4,000 and ran away. But they're not the only perpetrators here. We share responsibility. And the administrators, the counselors, the teachers at Oxford High School bear responsibility. I am certain that the Oakland County Sheriff's Department believes that had the administrators and counselors called in the police liaison who is there and who is available to them, that Ethan Crombley would not have been allowed to leave whatever room he was in, walk into a bathroom, arm himself, walk out and shoot Riley, almost kill Bella, and kill four others and wound eight others. I'm absolutely positive of it. And I think courts will agree. The only challenge we have is getting through the labyrinthian myriad of laws that have been set up by our politicians in this state to allow them to stand up in front of cameras and say how sad they are that these events occur.
but unfortunately, the victims aren't going to be able to do anything because we've passed laws that make it impossible for them to sue or do anything. How ridiculous. Any other questions? Sir, what kind of evidence do you have in terms of emails that specifically the proceedings? We have the same evidence uh, that, uh, that you have been privy to in terms of the prosecutor's release of information, our knowledge now that it isn't just one drawing or one writing, but is reams of drawing. But the prosecutor, you recall, has access to uh, things that are permitted under her subpoena power. We now have subpoena power as of this morning. So we can now subpoena the same documents that the prosecutor could compel uh, the Oxford School District to turn over. I might add that the Oxford School District politely declined uh, Attorney General Nessel's uh, uh, offer to conduct an investigation. Well, unfortunately, the Oxford School District is not going to be able to decline my offer to conduct an investigation because my offer is not going to be a request, but it's going to be a demand in the, face, in, in the form of subpoenas requiring them to turn over the documents so that we can lay out for you because remember, they've been a little coy with this. I realize, and I, I salute the prosecutor. She has uh, made some of the evidence available. Clearly, the Oxford High School uh, uh, administration, including the superintendent, has not been as transparent. And I believe that there is a lot more information there than uh, has been turned over, and I'll obtain that, and I will have no problem in pre presenting that evidence to the public. Um, I think one of the big things, I know it's been, it's been covered, but I think one of the big things in this case that could have prevented all of this tragedy would have been the, the involvement of the police liaison, which is what they're there for. Um, I have not heard a rational explanation uh, uh, from uh, the school administration as to why that was not utilized. Um, and as a result, by doing the things that they did or didn't do, they placed the students in much greater danger than they would have been had they done that. The students would have been protected, and that is basically the essence of the federal complaint here. The complaint here um, basically alleges in federal court something called state-created danger. The reason that we're in federal court, and let me tell you this, is because the state of Michigan is so hypocritical in the passage of laws that protect government that we have to go into federal court and have federal judges protect our children's civil rights because the state of Michigan has passed laws that protect murderers and people who assist murderers in killing our children. And so the, primarily the access for relief is federal court. It isn't just we went into federal court or we decided to file a federal court action. The reason we filed a federal court action is because the state of Michigan and your elected officials who are telling you how sad they are about this slaughter, in fact, assist the passage of laws that make it impossible for the citizens to do anything. And so we have to go into federal court to seek relief under the United States Constitution and not the laws of the state of Michigan because the laws of the state of Michigan are set up to protect guns and gun owners and people who allow children like Crumley to commit murder and mayhem. They're honor students, they're athletes, Bella's a star athlete. Riley was accepted to six colleges. This should have been a time in which they're preparing to go on Christmas vacation. They were leaving on December 25th. Instead, Riley spending her time convalescing and packing a wound with a neck wound that less than 2% of ch ch people who suffer that wound survive. And Bella has been uh, literally uh, traumatized uh, as if she was surviving in a war zone. These are two ultimately beautiful children who now are going to have to go back to a school that they know was attacked and is a war zone. That, just that in and of itself is, is a travesty and a tragedy in America. What, what have we become as Americans? What, 
why are, are, why are we, what have we become? Why would we allow this? Their backpacks are still strewn on the floor. The administration has got to collect all of their belongings. And at some point after the first of the year, the children will have to go back. And they'll remember and they'll know where one of their classmates or more of their classmates were murder, murdered or wounded or where they were murdered or wounded. What, what does that say to us about America? The hypocrisy has to stop. And if anybody wants to know why I did it, if any cynical human being says, oh, it's for the money, ha, ha, how do you think get, things get done in this country? How do you think things get done? There's no, there's only one Oakland County prosecutor, and these folks and the murderer are the only people who might go to jail for the rest of their lives. Nobody from that administration is going to go to jail. Nobody is going to be brought out before the bar of justice by the Oakland County prosecutor. It is only through the actions of these parents and others like them that something might get done in this regard. Something. And I don't hold a lot of hope because I keep telling you, don't believe the lip service that the public officials are telling you. Behind the scene, they're working and they pass laws to make it impossible for these parents and these children not only to get justice, to be protected. And that's what this lawsuit's about. How are you, very experts like this, talking about the family, appreciate the fear. We don't know what they're doing. We don't know what the daughters are going through. Can you tell us a bit more about what happened to Riley exactly and what they're telling you about? Briefly, I'll tell you that Riley and uh, um, Bella, along with uh, their friend who was murdered uh, and who was buried yesterday, were in, their, were in the bathroom. They exited the bathroom and they were shot down like, like, like they were in a war zone. Um, it happened like that um, and uh, since then their lives have been absolutely upended. But that's obvious. This is not unique to this situation. This, th this is the horror that these, these, this family has to go through. I mean, look at it. They're, they're thinking of a Christmas vacation. They're thinking of leaving on, on Christmas Day. They're thinking of, uh, of selecting uh, Riley's uh, college out of six. She's an honor student that she's been uh, admitted to. And now they have to pack her wounds. And they have to worry about being here because nobody's at home with her to watch the wound in her neck and make sure it's OK. Now, thank God she's going to survive. But again, only 2% of children her age, well, not just her age, who suffered neck wounds such as her, and she actually did the research on her own, survived this type of injury. So she is beyond lucky. But there's four that will never, as you know, get, go home. And there'll be another visitation tonight and another funeral tomorrow. And something, something, something has to be done about it. Something, something. And we're doing something. We're taking action now. We're not just talking about words and niceties, okay? Any uh, other questions? Right, what's your take on this independent investigation? I don't know what that means. It sounds like hogwash to me. That's There's no so, what's independent. The prosecutor will conduct an investigation relating to the murders and the murderer's family. The, no one, to my knowledge, will do an investigation except me or others of the uh, administrators and the people involved in the school district because they're not, uh, they're not charged with a crime and unless they're under subpoena or under uh, their defendants in this lawsuit, um, they don't have to respond, nor will they. And by the way, just so you know, okay, behind the scenes in all of this also is they're being told what to do by their insurance company. So you know it. Okay, this isn't, this is now another dirty little secret. Okay, the reason that you're not hearing anything from the uh, superintendent of schools and the principal at Oxford High School is because they've lawyered up by insurance lawyers who tell them, keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. Why? because they're worried not about an independent investigation to shine light on it, because they don't believe that such a thing should happen. They're worried about paying money. That's all they care about.
They, now they care about money, the, the financial liability. They built a beautiful football stadium. They built a beautiful blue football field. Beautiful. I don't know how many millions of dollars. Believe me, they're worried about financial responsibility. Well, that's the way the society works. Everybody might be cynical about it, but unfortunately, that's all I can do. I can make it hurt, but I can't make it hurt by putting them in jail. I can make it hurt by making them pay. Anybody else? What gun? Wow, what? It, it, just sane, rational laws that would require parents who buy guns to lock them up. Who, I'm not suggesting that we can't own guns in the society. I'm suggesting that we have sane, rational laws that at least make it as hard to own a gun or to use a gun as it is to drive a motor vehicle. We require everyone in this state, my children, to go through vehicle auto training uh, in order to drive a, a, a vehicle. And then they have to go through certain years in which they're supervised until they're allowed to do something. We don't do that for guns. That's insane. We don't allow people to dr drink alcohol. We think that's not good. We allow people to do drugs whenever they want to do it. But guns, who, who, who have done this to society, we allow it under some non these are this, These are the post. The reason I have this here, these two people are not only the facilitators of the murder by giving their son a gun and then by not cooperating with the authorities and, and the people at uh, 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 Oxford High School to remove their son. They're the poster children for the Second Amendment gun nuts who think, yeah, give everybody guns. Do every she knew one of the, the mother apparently wrote uh, uh, Crumley and said, don't do it. Don't do what? Don't do what? Apparently, she knew he was going to do it. And these are the poster children for what's happening in our society. These folks are the ones that are endangering all of us. They're the ones that are out there screaming the loudest about taking away their gun rights. And look what it happens to the rest of us. So these people we've allowed to run our lives. Well, isn't that great? These are the folks who are doing it. Yeah, the prosecutor. I, I'm not going to. I don't think you can get water out of a rock. So I, I tend to focus on more uh, important things. And these people are less important to me now than the people that we've brought suit against. I'd like to go back to the first question I asked you know, in this context because you're talking about being a facilitator, you're being in essence the taxpayers in the community. No, it's not. It is not the taxpayers in the community. It's the people that make up that school district. The taxpayers fund them, but the taxpayers don't make up that district. They do not. Those people are chosen privately. They're hired privately. There's a lot of things taxpayers fund, but taxpayers are also funding insurance policies. And insurance policies, I promise you, are covering all of those people, just like any other enterprise. That's why uh, we have how many school districts in the state? These things are money-making enterprises, in case you don't know. Um, these people are not doing this for the goodness of their heart. Um, school administrators uh, uh, make, in Michigan, hundreds of thousands of dollars in pay. They're some of the best-paid executives. They're very sought-after jobs in the state. Um, should the taxpayers exercise more control over this function? Maybe, but I, you don't see, you know, they go into the school board and they yell about uh, some nonsensical things about, uh, about teaching uh, race theory or something that I don't understand. But other than that, I don't see the taxpayers filling up the, uh, the uh, Board of Education meetings to make sure that uh, there's an investigation about what happened at Oxford High School. I would like to see as much concern about uh, uh, that as there is about certain teaching theories in this country, which don't make any sense to me. Forgive me. What I'm trying to get at, though, and I'm apparently not asking this clearly enough, is trying to exert influence or pressure in this fashion against school administrators. It's 
try and generate awareness about an issue you say is not being addressed legislatively, et cetera, which a lot of people agree with what you're saying. I'd like more from you in regard to the fact of my words, not yours, maybe you heard financially that maybe other districts, other, other school administrators across the region wake up and say this is a risk we can't take and thus exert pressure on lawmakers. That's exactly, but that's exactly right. Parkland, I understand, paid uh, about 122 or 130 million dollars uh, in damages, uh, in case you don't know, within the last several weeks as a result of the slaughter that occurred in that Florida high school. Um, the idea that it, it, the idea of these lawsuits, because the only thing that I can make them hurt is in their pocketbook, is to make them pay money. Now see, their response to that has been traditionally, we'll show you, we'll prevent you from having to make us pay money. We'll prevent you not be, by winning in court, but by fixing the laws so that we're what they call immune from lawsuits. So you can't even bring a lawsuit against us. So we can bring motions in front of the court and get you kicked out of court before you even get your case heard. That's the way they fix the deck in this case. That's why I tell you that the state legislatures on the one hand are giving lip service and then they're going out to dinner with the NRA and all the insurance companies and saying, well, what can we do to fix the deck? Nobody pays attention to the laws we pass. So nobody knows, basically, if you ask 100 people on the street, 99 out of 100 people won't know that the laws in Michigan are fixed, so you virtually can't bring a lawsuit under Michigan law to make it hurt as a result of negligence committed in this fashion, allowing a homicidal student with a gun to walk into school, keep his gun in his backpack, let him leave uh, uh, whatever room he was in to commit uh, a slaughter. A lot of people don't, most people don't know that. Now the next question is, how do you get people off their asses to do something about it? How do you get people? How do you get people? Instead of talking about race theory, critical race theory, you get them off their butts and they go into the, the, the school boards, what, why isn't there uh, 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 just everybody in mass going to the uh, uh, Oxford uh, School District school boards and saying, turn over the money right now. Turn over your insurance policies right now. Admit liability. Show us all your documents right now. You're talking about what the people can do? Do that. Why do I have to go through the courts to try to make the, the administration at Oxford School District come clean? Why do... Wh who gives them the right? If they're a public, if they're the taxpayers, who gives them the right to tell the Attorney General, we don't want an investigation? And when they talk about a, uh, an independent investigation, what does that mean? Who's the independent? Who, what independent? Like, there, like there's two sides to this? What's, what's independent? Who's the other, what's the other side to this? I don't know. And it, look, look. What else? You got a question, sir? I'd Thank you. The prosecutors seem to indicate last week they refused to investigate. Is there a fair bit to indicate the same thing? That they're still investigating more charges, could be more charges, could be additional people. And it seemed to indicate that she was, in fact, looking at the actions of the school and, and those that were involved in making all of those decisions. Are you saying here today, and certainly you did in your lawsuit, that you don't think that's right. She's still working on that. No, no. I saw that very early on where she would not um, uh, agree that she was not investigating. Well, I can tell you in terms of experience, if nothing else, that nothing will come of that. There will be no charges brought against any other individuals, that is school officials, for gross negligence or anything like that. If that happened, and I, the prosecutor could prove me wrong, but I don't think I'm going to be proved wrong. Then you're going to see some, like this gentleman asked about hurting. That will scare school officials. If you start prosecuting school officials and you start putting people in jail from the school who could have prevented this, that will also cause change. But then they'll start changing the laws 
They'll work behind your back on that and they'll make it so you can't charge school officials. They'll say, if we allow school officials to be charged criminally, just like they say if we allow them or to have to pay money, that will impede people from wanting to be school officials, which is utter and complete nonsense. But that's what will happen in this society because the force, the powers that be are greater than the, the will of the people. The people have become complacent. The people have become just pawns in this, in this game um, that the money interests control. And this is about money here. Trust me, this lawsuit now, behind the scenes of all this, is a big insurance company or more insurance companies meeting with the Oxford High School powers that be and saying, what do we do now? What do we do now with Figer's lawsuit? How do we get him kicked out of court? Not instead of, let's be transparent. Let's turn over all the documents. Let's find out what really happened. Let's, if we have to admit we should have done what Mr. Figer's lawsuit says we should have done, that ain't going to happen. They're going to lawyer up with insurance company lawyers, and they're going to deny, 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 and deny. And then when they get tired of denying, they'll still keep denying. What? One more question. We included everyone because we are not certain who did what. Okay, it, nothing's been forthcoming except what's been provided to you. The prosecutor, I, I have to say, has been more transparent than a lot of other prosecutors who, who, who circle the wagon and protect other school authorities just like they're part of the government insiders. So I have to admit that this prosecutor has done an, a, a good job in in providing a lot of the information we're not entirely uh, uh, clear about. However, it is clear to us that whether it be school administrators, whether it be teachers, or whether it be counselors, some or all of them were involved with Crumley in terms of the knowledge of what he had written, in terms of the knowledge of what he had drawn, in terms of their absolute knowledge that he presented a danger and that he had no business being in the school. He needed to go. When his parents said, we're not going to take him out, he needed to be taken out. And I'm absolutely certain that any one of those had the ability to call the police liaison to bring him in. I'm absolutely certain. So it's a process of weeding them out. We don't know the, the integral ins and outs of who did what, where, when. That's going to come out. But I might add also, I've watched the press conferences of the, uh, uh, the administrators at Oxford High School, the superintendent, and that man is, is perseverating. That man is obscuring everything. That man hasn't come clean about anything. So he's a public official. He's at I hope he's, he's, he feels himself responsible to the public. Well, he better come right out today and lay it all out there. Who could, what would be the re, what would possible, possible reason could there ever be for the superintendent of Oxford Schools not to lay out every single bit of evidence that he has? He can't claim the prosecutor told me not to do it. The prosecutor can't tell him not to do something. The prosecutor can't tell him to hide evidence. The prosecutor doesn't control him. What possible reason could there be for him not laying out everything and let the chips fly? Let the chips fall where they're going to fall. What possible reason? I'm telling you right now the reason it hasn't happened today is he's being told by his lawyers, don't do it. If you do it, we'll be liable. Mr. Figer will get a whole lot of money. It will hurt and maybe your job will get lost in this. And so that's why he's not doing it. So after this, you go run to him and you say, Figer says, give us everything right now today. And you give the people of Oxford everything because it doesn't matter if your job or anybody else's job is on the line. Who are you protecting? Are you protecting the students? Are you protecting the parents? Are you protecting yourselves from liability? Okay. Thank Profiteering. Yeah, right. I'm ready for that. 
That's just nonsense. There's that just. It's not a, I don't care. There, maybe they could have funerals for the next. There's been hundreds, every day's a funeral in this country. Uh, tell me the day in the last 20 years that this, this, these sort of events haven't happened or about to happen. There's no good day for this. None. And see, that's exact. If educators absolutely said that lawsuits to set forth responsibility and to make people responsible is profiteering, that shows you the madness. That's not nobody with any brains. That's these people saying that. That's what these people would say. These are the type of people who would say exactly what you just said. Not rational people who know in our society there's only two ways to get justice. One, the prosecutor brings a criminal case, and they're only bringing it against a couple people. And two, civil cases are brought so that there must, might be justice. And then there's a third kind of people, these nuts, who say, stop people like Figer from profiteering. It has nothing to do with profit. I wouldn't do this for money if my life depended on it. I don't need it. What I need is justice and answers. And I'm one of the people, absolutely, who can stand in front of you and say, I just don't need that money. I want to have answers. So the people who are saying that aren't educators, they're friends of these people who are saying it. These are the folks who are saying that sort of nonsense. These are the people who say, he's trying to take our guns away. These are the people who say, make it easy for the next 20 years to kill hundreds of kids and traumatize hundreds of thousands. It's these people saying it. Thank you.